Hi guys, this is Victor from Crimes Anatomy. In China, on a late night in April 2016, a van was stopped for a routine police check. These stops are common between provinces in China to control and document the flows of goods and people. However, the inspectors didn't expect to find the body of a woman in the trunk. This is not the normal way to transport a body in China. There were no funeral proceedings or medical team involved. The three men didn't seem to have any answers and were arrested on the spot. They didn't have any papers on them or even a license to explain what they were doing with the body. As it turns out, the driver of the vehicle was smuggling this body to earn some extra money for a strange custom known as coast marriages. This was outlawed in 2006, but it's still prevalent in some areas of China. But what was strange was how quickly he acquired the body. If you see where I'm going with this, stick around. But before I go into it, I also want to introduce a co-host. It's my buddy, JP. Hey guys, this is JP from The Strange Bar and Grill. If you like strange true crime and storytelling, then come have a drink with me and listen to interesting true crime cases from across the globe. For the record, we are real people. We are not AI. Back to you, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, yeah. So, let's get on with the story. One of the men, Ma, a 60-year-old from the quiet Kweja village in the Shangxi province, the same province that he was trying to leave. So, Ma gained quite a reputation for his matchmaking skills. But he had two personas of matchmaking. One is the typical matchmaking between people that are finding hard-to-find spouses settle with. And then the other was his matchmaking for the dead. And you will see how he leveraged both in a second. In China, for years they had this one-child policy. There's been a disproportion of men to women. People just generally favored having men in the past because they felt they carry on the family name, you don't need to support them, and they earn money. This is not the case anymore, and also these traditional gender roles are not the case. There's also no more one-child policy, but a lot of people born in the 70s, 80s, and 90s obviously are affected by it. The tradition of ghost weddings has roots almost 3,000 years back in China. Some people believe... When you pass away, you have the same needs in death as you do in life, and some of those needs are for companionship. So often, for their siblings or family members, if they were single and they passed away, that meant their spirit's not only not going to find peace, but can also come back to haunt their family. Get around this, they would find someone deceased to marry this person so they could live on in the afterlife and also join their ancestral home and burial grounds together. It's really about keeping everyone happy, keeping the spirits happy and that kind of stuff. The problem is, nowadays, it's a rare custom. And when someone passes away, dead bodies, they're going to decompose over time. There's a huge demand to find another dead body for your son or daughter who's recently passed away that's still fresh. I can see this is going, this is going to be dark. <laughs> <laughs> soon because where you got human beings you got the good and the bad and then you got the people exploiting it and people like ma are doing just that so what ma found out is hey i can pair up these dead bodies right and he wasn't the only one doing this there was a huge increase in people at the time digging up graves but those bodies, you know, those decomposed bodies, sometimes old grandmas are just not the same as a beautiful, fresh, young bride or even someone middle-aged. And this is where Ma came in. So a little bit about Ma first before I go into it. So Ma had a criminal history. Basically, he used to be involved in trafficking and abduction. He had spent some time in prison for this, but he hadn't seemed to have learned anything from this because he only got worse when he got out. So what Ma figured out is he can befriend people on both sides play the friendly uncle that you could lean in and talk to about your problems. On one side, he would find families that were struggling to wed their single daughters, usually one with a mental disability. He would use their disability to his advantage, knowing they would be easily convinced later. On the other end, he would be on the lookout for families who had just lost an unmarried loved one, were desperate to find a bride and willing to pay good money for a freshly dead body, a body that would also join their family in burial. After gaining both their trust, 
he knew that they knew that time was of the essence and they would offer good money to him for a deal, a deal that they couldn't refuse. This led up to the February 2016 discovery. He found Sun Xu Qin, which is an elderly woman, and she had a 45-year-old mentally ill daughter called Liu Kaixia, right? So he befriends Sun Kyu Jin and the first few times he just introduces himself as a matchmaker, listens to her problems, and her problems are the fact that she's getting old, she can't take care of her daughter, she can't expect her daughter to take care of her, and she doesn't want to burden her daughter with nothing after she passes away. Her only wish is that her daughter finds a suitable husband and joins her family. On April 2nd, Ma comes back to her home and says, hey, good news, I have found exactly what you're looking for. Not only that, but they're a great family, they have a son, and they want to marry your daughter because they feel there will be a good match and they could take good care of her. So she's extremely happy, but she's a bit suspicious. She's like, you know, where are they from? I haven't seen them. Do you have any photos? He's like, oh, you don't worry about this. You know, don't worry yourself. Here's 300 US dollars that they gave me. This guy sounds like a scumbag. It's don't 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 trust him. <laughs> Total scumbag. Yeah. And you you see where you're going with this, right? He tells her he's found someone, he pays her money, and then he's like, Look, I, I want your daughter to look her best, you know, because they're gonna take care of her. So he's like, make sure she's dressed up nice. She's going getting married. So this woman is so happy. In the meantime, what this scumbag does is he goes and purchase a bunch of drugs. I think he had someone in the hospital that he knew that he would pay a lot of money. He bought promethazine, some other sedation, and another injectable drug, basically a cocktail of three drugs. So when he gets this woman, instead of taking her anywhere close by, he immediately injects her and she's mentally ill, so she doesn't really know what's going on. Then he tells a taxi driver to take take them to a cave. He's like, oh, she's not feeling well, right? She's sleepy. We're just going to stop here. He takes her to a cave and over several hours, he continues pumping her with sedative drugs. So she's feeling woozy. She is looking at this man like, why is he doing this to me? What's going on? That's so horrible. A horrible individual. And then the person he got help from in purchasing these drugs, he and that person basically take her body over to this other family. And he's tricked them as well. He's like, I've got this fresh body of someone I know has just passed away and they're completely happy to marry their daughter to your son. They're happy for your daughter even to join your family and be buried with your son. And this is very difficult to find, you know, a fresh body. And so these people, they're not well off, but they pay top dollar for what they could afford. Hey, you're in luck. I just have a person that just happened to die an hour ago. Here you go. So you can imagine within just 24 or 48 hours turnaround time, something crazy like that, what he must have said to poor Sun Xu Jin, right? He must have approached her and said, I've got this family who's looking to get married and they are interested in your daughter, but you have to act on this fast because they have many other suitors but I can put in a good word for you and I can solve the problem, time's of the essence. And this is a kind of scumbag tactic he would use because he knew these people are looking for a fresh body and every second that passes, that body is going to be worth less to him. So he's basically convincing this poor woman to hand her daughter over so he can expedite her death and transport her body over. That's the kind of person he is. And that's why when you hear me later, I'm going to talk about sympathy and why I just don't have any for this guy. This other family that he tricked, he basically got 5,000 US dollars, about 35,000 yuan, and he pocketed that. And, and you can imagine, he just gives 300 US dollars to this woman for signing over the life of her daughter, and then he murders her. And out of the 5,000 US dollars that he earned, I don't know how much exactly he gave to his accomplice, but that's besides the point. It's the trickery of it all. And let me tell you, 5,000 US dollars in rural China, it goes a long way. He can live pretty comfortably for months, if not up to a year, in that amount of money. Now he realizes what easy money this is. And of course, greed takes over him right away. He has his eye on another woman, An Fu Rong. She's a 51-year-old woman with mental illness as well. This time, he doesn't reach out. He pays his accomplices into luring her. And I'm not sure exactly what was said. The records aren't entirely clear. But basically, they lured her and then they heavily sedated her. 
And similarly to the first victim, he finds another family. These people are paying even more money. So these people paid him 6,000 US dollars. Noticing a pattern here, he seems to be targeting disabled people. Is that his MO? Is that what he does? This guy's the worst because he knows what he's doing. The, the first victim, for example, he knew the mother couldn't follow up to check on her daughter, basically gave her $300 for her daughter's life. Obviously, she didn't know that was going to happen, but most mothers, you would think, want to check up on their daughters, but she just didn't have the means to do so. It's very twisted and very strategic thinking. The complete vulture, you know, and it just shows how the criminal mind works, right? Because second he realizes this is easy money, people don't ask, it's a don't ask, don't tell policy, then he can just go for it. And by targeting people that aren't really aware, connected, or can really fight back, he can get away with it. So over to his second victim, as I mentioned, this 51-year-old woman, I believe she was single and he didn't even talk to her or anything with his 5,000 USD payout. He's got some other scumbags with him, the mortuary work, worker, which he had the first time, but he's got another accomplice. So they target this woman, this 51-year-old An Fu Rong. He doesn't take part in it directly, but he basically gets his accomplices to lure her, sedate her. And then they all get together and overdose her till she's dead. They were transporting her body that day on February 2016 when completely by chance they were caught and inspected. Not every vehicle is checked by the police. It just happened to be that the inspectors were sharp. They noticed the odd behavior, stopped these men, and that's where they found the body. So with the second victim there, or, or, or this victim, they didn't even try to sweet talk her, promise her anything. They just said, hey, you have no family, you're single, let's just lure you out and kidnap you, basically. Yeah, pretty much. They were looking around the village and they found this woman. They stalked her for a while and lured her into a trap. I believe they took her to another cave and ended her life much the same way. Close these caves off, man. Yeah. I can't imagine the crimes that are happening in those caves. It's like the abandoned buildings in Detroit, man. Like no one's going to go yeah. in there anymore. And now you've got these little caves in this rural village, crime hotspots, right? Wow. So fast tracking from this, now these guys are arrested. You know, I don't know what interrogation methods they use in China, man. The guy confessed. He had a swift trial. And the funny thing is, right, so in a lot of cases, there's some kind of sympathy you have for the perpetrator. I have zero sympathy for the scumbag, man, because he preyed on the absolute needy, the people that you should be helping out of the kindness of your heart as a human being. Protecting, yeah. Exactly. I can't really view him as a human being. So what people don't know about trials in China is if they have enough evidence against you and they try you, you're done. So they basically have to sign their death certificate, which is also a certificate which hands over their human rights. And I have a photograph of him here doing just that. That's him signing away his human rights. And I looked at this photograph for a good 20 to 30 seconds, just a bit of morbid fascination with what this man must have been going through, thinking, what brought me to this point that here I am sitting in my 60s, signing away my human rights, pretty sure I'm going to be executed very soon. It's just this whole fascination with what goes through people's minds, the victims as well as the criminals that has always fascinated me. It actually reminds me of a uh, story I covered, the 2008 milk scandal in China, where these C-level employees got in trouble for basically poisoning milk and causing all these issues with the children. And they had to do the same thing. They had to sign their human rights away, basically, and they were executed pretty swiftly. Yeah, I remember that case. And you know what? Uh, being in Hong Kong, there's huge reverberations of that case there. It was baby powder for kids. Of all the things to choose, there's usually a few things that you do not want to go with the profit driver at the expense of even an ounce of safety. And one of those is the food for our children. But that's exactly what these guys did. And I don't know, they weren't thinking or whatnot, but this was fatal to kids. And I don't know how many children died and it was all traced back to this one factory and these executives. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that case. I covered that story so long ago, I don't remember all the details, but I do remember they were trying to boost the protein and they were using some obviously chemical that's harmful and fatal to children to boost their numbers. Because of that, a lot of people from China were coming over to Hong Kong and buying 
baby powder in bulk, like suitcases and suitcases of them. They actually had to pass a law here to stop people from doing that. But we're going off on a bit of a tangent, but that just shows you how one case can have a massive impact across the nation. And this did as well, to some extent. Coming back to this case, after the trial, he signs his rights away. I don't know when exactly he was executed because some of this stuff is kept a secret, but he's no longer with us, uh, thankfully. And the laws and regulations of the government have also changed. So as of 2006, there's been more strict government crackdown on such matchmaking agencies for the dead. Uh, And just to be clear, the law prohibits the buying and selling of corpses for commercial purposes, okay, except under specific circumstances such as medical research or education. But yeah, that's basically this case summed up for you short and sweet. I, I thank you, JP, for adding your thoughts and comments on this. It's always a lot more fun to be discussing this with someone rather than just narrating it. Well, thank you for inviting me. This is an interesting case and definitely wild. I, w- I would never think something like this would be happening. It's, it's insane. It's crazy. Yeah. And to be clear, this is not a common occurrence in China. Some people are familiar with China, but others that are not, they may get the wrong yeah. sense because we're covering this case. No, this shocked a lot of people in China as well. They weren't aware that this kind of stuff's still happening. I mean, this is akin to a lot of bad traditions in other cultures that we all have that are still happening today under the radar. Here in the US, you hear those stories of these funeral home directors selling bodies and body parts. So, I mean, this is not a, a Chinese thing. You hear this all over the world, all over the globe people dabbling in selling human bodies and body parts and whatnot. Yeah, it's a crazy case. Uh, And just a real quick shout out to China for executing. I mean, this is going to sound crazy, but (laughs) shout out to China for executing people swiftly. If you look at the US, you'll have cases that just get drug out for years and years Mm -hmm. and years with appeals and whatnot. So shout out to China for getting on top of that stuff and saying, hey, get these people out of here. I mean, that sounds dark. That sounds morbid. But if, if my loved one was affected by somebody so callous and somebody so greedy and evil, I would want that person executed immediately. I would want that person out of there. No, actually, you raise a good point. And I I don't want to end this story just on this note, but we both cover these kind of dark crimes. And what's so difficult for everyday people to understand is how gruesome some of these crimes are, right? So you have to really put yourself in the shoes of the victim's family talking about justice, is it really justice to feed them, take care of them for their entire life while the other person has one of the worst possible sentences, right? Their life taken away. I would actually argue it's better for society to not waste taxpayer money on keeping people that have done some of the most heinous crimes alive, you know, pay the ultimate price if you have committed the ultimate crime. But that's just our view. I just want to say one more thing. Thank you so much for coming on, JP. I enjoyed doing this with you. Guys, please check out his channel, Strange Bar and Grill. Um, I enjoy listening and watching all of his shows. Uh, He's got a great sense of storytelling and hope to continue some more collabs like this. You want to close this out, JP? Thanks for inviting me on your show. Maybe we'll do a few more collabs. I definitely want to do a collab with you on my channel. So that one's going to come out for sure. And maybe if you guys all like this, maybe we'll just keep doing collaborations and having these conversations. Go make sure to check out my channel, Strange Bar and Grill. I do storytelling as well. I sometimes have a couple of drinks on there and I roast the criminals on there as well. So if you guys like that type of content, come check me out. Thanks, guys. Until next time. Peace.